the barn is just about full here at Irondale High School for tonight's game. Uh, North Suburban Conference boys basketball action between the Irondale Knights and the Moundsview Mustangs. Steve Glenn, I'm uh, real excited about this game. It, uh, these two teams always have excellent games, particularly last season when Irondale had Rod Gross, who is now at the University at Marquette, and when the Moundsview Mustangs had Mr. Basketball, Steve Schlothauer, who is currently at Augustana in Sioux Falls. It's uh, tradition here, a lot of tradition. Well, we should have a good matchup tonight, too, Charlie. Rod's brother, Bill, who is a 6'6 junior, will be going up against Steve McCavish for Moundsview, who is a 6'7 senior. So the tradition kind of lives on, and we're going to have some good basketball. I think a lot of inside basketball. Irondale likes to try and get the ball into Steve Mays or Bill Gross, a six, couple of 6'6 six, six players, and McTavish will definitely be the inside man for Moundsview, although they've got a couple of people that can certainly shoot the ball from the outside, too, if that things get bottled up inside. We got a quick look at the, co that the head coach for the, Mount for the Irondale Knights in his first year, Larry Ronglin. Ronglin, as Steve Glynn in intimated in the opening of our game, assistant coach on at the Richfield staff on the sophomore squad for a couple of years, and then the last three years he has been at Mound High School uh, compiling a good record there. So he is coaching for the first year at the Irondale High School team. And the thing is that uh, a lot of people have said about Ron Glenn is the fact that he is able to instill a good attitude in his players and is able to continue the winning tradition for the Irondale Knights. We'll see if that continues tonight. Irondale, of course, is 1-0 in the North Suburban Conference. They defeated the Columbia Heights Highlanders by a score of 71-49. to And they, of course, have that game under their belts. For Moundsview, as we said in the pregame show, uh, very definitely a lot of experience, but only on the scrimmage side of things. They've not had a full house to play in front of as far as game conditions are concerned. So it's going to be very interesting to see just exactly what's going to happen for the, uh, the Moundsview Mustangs. We'd like to mention the playback times for our game in case you've uh, just tuned in and would like to recommend it to another friend or are taping it a little bit later. We have a playback scheduled for Saturday or Sunday at, I say at 11 p.m. There are the playback times. Sunday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., Tuesday again at 4.30 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m. So very definitely uh, you can recommend to your friends sometimes that you'd like to see the game. We have uh, a couple of VCR times for you as well, as you can see. We're just about ready for our game between Irondale and Moundsview and ready for the starting lineups. Gary Ronglin, or Larry Ronglin, giving his charges a little bit of pregame charge up and Ziggy calls he seems uh, to be always in control in Moundsview no matter what kind of squad he's got we had Mark Olson uh, come up to us uh, before the game Mark of course did the Blaine Columbia Heights girls basketball game with me earlier in the week and just basically said well I'm I, I've coached uh, JV ball for uh, uh, I should say eighth and seventh and eighth graders for Moundsview I'm a little bit too partial <laughs> he gets a little bit overworked if he were to do this game so uh, situation where emotions run deep for both schools. Preseason pollsters, too, have picked Moundsview 14th so far of the top 20 in the Metro, so obviously they think that they have some talent, even though they might not have the experience that they did last year. Well, a lot of the preseason polls, of course, are based on reputation and experience, and when you're talking experience, you're talking Ziggy Falls. He seems to be the man who can basically take care of just about any kind of situation, no matter what his talent is. That's exactly what the coaches are counting on. And now for the starting lineups for tonight's game. Mark Dufault will start at one of the guard positions for the Moundsview Mustangs. He gets hot. He can shoot the eyes out of the basket. Swearingen. Steve Swearingen will be next, or Jeff Swearingen, I should say, starting at the other guard. Andy Schultz, a 6'3 senior forward. Swearingen is the other forward. Steve McTavish, the star player for the Moundsview Mustangs, 6'7 center, and he's expected to do it all, include bringing up the ball when Moundsview runs into a press. And double zero, Dave Leeser, 5'11 guard, rounds out the squad for the Moundsview Mustangs. For the Irondale Knights. Engstrom will start first for the, Mount, for the Irondale Knights. Matt Engstrom, 6'2 forward. Steve Mays is the other forward. He wears number three. He's 6'6". He'll be banging in on the post position quite a bit. Perry Harris coming in for the Irondale Knights. He'll be the point guard wearing number 23. 
Travis Sabe. It will be the off guard. He'll be wearing number 35. And as Steve mentioned, it'll be McTavish versus this guy, number 55, Bill Gross. Gross and Sabe, the juniors for the Irondale Knights on the squad. Be an excellent game between both teams. And we're waiting for the opening tip-off here at Irondale High School. Full house. Definitely got a lot of Moundsview supporters behind us, but that's to be expected. Moundsview community has always supported their basketball team. Diggy Calls, of course, having taken his Moundsview Mustangs to the champion to the state championship tourney rounds in 1985. And as Steve mentioned, ranked this year. McTavish and Gross getting ready for the opening tip-off. And it will be controlled by the Moundsview Mustangs. Nice job by Leeser. And we're underway here at Irondale High School. Moundsview will look inside for McTavish to start with. Won't take that much perimeter shooting. Looks like Irondale is starting out in a man-to-man -man here, Charlie. They sometimes like to go with the 2-3 zone. There's McTavish outside. McTavish does have a good outside shot, but it doesn't fall there. Foul underneath the bucket. The we'll seal the foul's on. I believe it's on number 34, Andy Schultz. So Schultz, one of the starting forwards, garners his first foul, and Irondale will inbound it. Moundsview showing a full court press to start their defense. And they go to Perry Harris for Irondale. And they, too, are starting out in a man-to-man. -man. Shot taken by Angstrom does not, or I should say, Swearingen does Matt Angstrom doesn't fall. Whoa! Oh. Andy That's one way to bust his own. Andy Schultz just going up from the top of the key, and it was string music. Nice shot. McTavish and Schultz at the bottom post. Harris drove the key, and that one comes off. Moundsview will rebound. Schultz with it. Angstrom tried one from the other wing. Can't get it to fall so far. Leeser looking in towards the bench and waiting for signals from Ziggy Calls. Leeser to McTavish. McTavish playing high post and low post. He'll be everywhere tonight, no doubt about it. I think they'd like to see McTavish a little bit closer to the basket, though. Schultz will try it again. Gets nothing but the board. McTavish goes down for the rebound, and Moundsview loses it. Looks like Harris came up with it, I think. Schultz has got a good shot, but he didn't show it there. That was a brick. Harris looking inside. Has it knocked away, and it will be Irondale's ball. Nice defense on the part of Dufault. He's got quick hands. Terry Harris at the top of the key and tries a dangerous loop pass. Chased four into the corner. Bit of a tight floor here at Irondale, and made especially all that more interesting by the fact that the far side of the floor has a four-foot drop before you get to the stands, the home stands, that is. Looks like Monsky's kind of gone into a half-court trap here. They've dropped out of their man-to-man, -man, and they're trying to double up on the person with the ball. Pressure on the ball. Good tenant of basketball, and Ziggy calls, of course. There you see it right there. And it works once again as McCavish comes up with a rebound. Off the errant shot from Engstrom. So Engstrom, the designated shooter for Irondale in the opening part of the game. Schultz trying to get inside. It has, has it taken away by Sadie. Travis Sadie scores two points on the coast-to-coast. -coast. Travis Sadie, coast-to-coast with that steal. And Irondale has tied it up at two. Five minutes left here in the first period. Nice move there by Sadie. Real quick hand. There's a bad pass. He telegraphed that one. And Mays... Does not get it to fall, but Gross on a beautiful follow-in tips it in. Irondale takes a 4-2 lead. 
excellent follow there. So lots of times the tendency is just to let him go in for an open layup like that. But as you can see, it's always not a sure thing, and he went in and followed it up nicely. Schultz has it batted right back into his face. It'll be a jump ball. We'll see who gets it on the alternate possession. And it will be the Irondale Knights. Irondale's also trying to surround the ball, Charlie. Put pressure on the person with it, especially early in the season. It's guys got to get used to passing the ball and looking at different situations. Here's Harris shooting inside to Gross. And Gross will take the eight-footer. Thank you very much off the nice pass from Harris. And Gross has his second bucket of the night. Andy Schultz, I think, just picked up his second foul, Charlie. Schultz is push pushing off on the play. The bucket will count, and Irondale will get the ball right back. Inside, nice play. Scoring his first two points of the night is Mays, Steve Mays, and the 6'6 center that's forward. The, that's the kind of thing that preseason practice is for, work on those plays. McTavish underneath. He's going to get himself all kinds of traffic. Schultz on a hard rebound. Swearingen tries a shot. Moundsview still rebounding. And Schultz finally puts it in and will have the three-point play. Excellent work on the offensive board there by Moundsview. He had one man on either side of the basket, just kept going up after it. Irondale's got to box out a little bit better than that, or that's going to be a long night for him. Score is 8-4, Irondale over Moundsview. 4-12 left here in the first period. Along with Steve Glynn, this is Charlie Stellick. North Suburban Conference basketball action from Irondale High School. Schultz has it fall off. McTavish with the rebound. Knew what to do with it there, and McTavish has his first bucket of the night off the glass, off the free throw rebound. Harris. Looking to come up the court, does, coast to coast. Doesn't get it to fall. Gross with a tip-in attempt, nothing doing. And Schultz comes up with a rebound. Getting back to that free throw, Charlie, there's no way that an offensive player should be able to get the rebound on a free throw like that, especially when it falls short. Well, it's close. Harris. Does a Travis Sabe and Irondale. Takes a 10 to 6 lead on the steal and the go, go ahead bucket. Irondale's guards are showing quick hands. You see, he's watching the ball there. Trying to get his hand in to save the ball for the Moundsview Mustangs was Dufault. And Dufault draws the foul as he does so. Oh, check that, Leaser. Leaser draws it on the hack. And Moundsview immediately calls the timeout. I started to mention earlier, Charlie, that Irondale is watching the ball. Sometimes the tendency is to watch the man, but if you keep your eye on the ball, the ball's not going to fake you out. It's going to go anywhere. There you see Coach Larry Ronglian of the Irondale Knights exhorting his team to even quicker and faster things, although I don't know how he could possibly get that. His team has really come ahead with the steals. Moundsview, on the other end, a little bit cold. From the floor, they are just three of eight shooting for right now, according to our statistician, Jim, the Temple of Doom. Getting a little noisy, as it always does here at Irondale High School. This is always a rivalry between the Mustangs and the Knights. When we come back to the floor, the Irondale Knights will have the ball. Team fouls are creeping up real quickly on Moundsview. They have three to their credit right now. We're still in the first period, 3.28 left. We did a game the other night, Charlie, a girls game, White Bear Lake and North St. Paul, where both teams, I think, were shooting one and one at the end of the first quarter. And we may very well have that for the Irondale Knights tonight. Harris showing excellent moves inside. Going away by McTavish, and there you see the kind of moves that he has it. All it took was a momentary hesitation on handling the ball on the part of the Irondale player, and McTavish had it away. You can see that he's got the potential to be a good Division I player. Going to the University of Texas. And his basketball playing days at Moundsview are over with. Irondale's gone back to a man-to-man. -man. McTavish getting doubled anytime he's close to the ball. That's an air ball on the part of Schultz. Moundsview rebounds. Bringing it up the floor is Sabe. Inside. McTavish. Tried for nothing but ball. 
as Mays put up the shot, did not get it. Got a little bit of the wrist instead, and he draws his first foul of the night. Even though he did draw the foul there, Charlie, that's going to make Irondale think about it. We may have to go up and see that McTavish soaring up above him. It's going to alter a few shots. Dufault will come out for the Moundsview Mustangs, and going in will be Mike Conley, a 6'4 sophomore. Ziggy Calls forced to go to sophomores as his bench, of course, is not very deep. And Mays puts in the free throw for the Irondale Knights, make it, making it 11-6 here in the first period. Number 41, Dan Toogood, has come in for Irondale also. He's a 6'3 junior. Toogood with 13 points against the Columbia Heights Highlanders in their first game of the season. Mays sinks both free throws, making it 12-6. Moundsview brings it down the court. Leiser. Takes a look inside for McTavish. McTavish, strong move to the bucket, but the shot is off the rim, and Moundsview loses the rebound. The ball goes out of bounds. Was it off the Moundsview player or the Irondale player? They say Irondale. And too good will inbound it for Irondale. Harris with the ball. Getting good penetration. Nice dish off to Too Good. Too Good trying for the rebound. Ball picked up by Gross. Gross tried to get it off the glass. Following the shot is Sabie. And finally McTavish comes up with it. Three offensive rebounds, and Irondale could not put it in. Excellent re rebound there by Sabie, but he made a poor choice there going up to two shoot that turnaround from about the free throw line. He should have taken it back out to the top of the key and got something started offensively again. Both teams trying to play a little give and go here in the early part of the game. As we mentioned, Irondale's first game here on their home court for Moundsview, their first game ever. As Schultz puts in his third bucket of the night, Andy Schultz, the bulwark of scoring so far for Moundsview. It's amazing when Schultz is on there going in swishes, but he's also thrown up two or three close to air balls. Sabi trying the shot there, rebounded by Schultz. Andy Schultz and Steve McTavish, the only two returning lettermen for the Moundsview Mustangs here in 86, and yet the Mustangs rank number 15 in the Metro Pole preseason. Whistle underneath as the pass from Leisure McTavish was attempted. Sabi, I think, was called for the foul. Travis Sabi. It's four team fouls now on Irondale. Oh, no, I believe that's only the second, I'm sorry, on Irondale. Second team foul on, on the Irondale Knights, Sabi's first. Irondale still is in the man-to-man, -man, but they're dropping back. They're letting him have the ball outside. They'll let him take that shot, and they want him to try and get the ball inside, but that's where most of their defensive coverage is. Swearingen looking for some room inside, couldn't find it. Now Leisure will try to find a hole. Per Perry Harris, what a little tip, and the give-and-go works for the Moundsview Mustang, or for the Irondale Knights. Harris is having a heck of a defensive ball game. He's picked up a couple baskets because of it. He's got quick hands. He knows where the ball's going to go. He's got great anticipation. That's his second bucket of the night, and both of them have been on steals. And now Moundsview tries to do a little bit of the same kind of medicine. And instead, drawing the, or getting the foul is Swearingen. You saw Schultz throw up another shot there. Boy, he's not uh, shy about putting that ball up in the air. Well, I get the feeling he was told by Ziggy Calls, hey, shoot all you want. We're going up against a taller team. We're going up against a team that is probably going to play us in a man-to-man. -man. He's certainly been hot and cold, though. I think he makes one, then he misses one, and makes one, and misses one. Too good puts in his first, first shot of the night from the free throw line. 15-8. Irondale over Moundsview. Second one goes in and out. Rebounded, of course, by Moundsview, or I shouldn't say, of course, this is early in the season. Offensive players can get the rebounds off the free throws. We've seen that in a number of games already. Coaches do not like that, though. That gives them gray hairs. Oh, boy. If that had gone in, that'd be from three-point range in the NBA. Swearingen doesn't get it to fall. And Sabi stepped on the line as he tried to do something with the rebound. Moundsview's ball. McTavish fires inside. Schultz has the shot. Tried to hit it high off the glass. Trying to come up with a tip in with Swearingen as the quarter ends. 15 to 8. The Moundsview Mustangs are down to the Irondale Knights at their own home court. 
When we return, Steve Glenn and I will have the exciting second quarter for you from Irondale High School. Moundsview's ball as Leisure tries to look inside and to McTavish gets the low pass is still able to do something with it. Ball struggled for underneath. Outlet it to Harris. Harris will try to take it coast to coast. Ball comes off the Moundsview player. It'll be Irondale ball. Generally though, Charlie, Irondale's doing a great job of keeping McTavish out of the inside. They're giving him the outside shots which Schultz has been taking. But even when McTavish does get the ball anywhere near inside, he's really got to work to do it. They're doing a great job of collapsing back under the basket. Substitution being made. Leisure comes in. And Schultz will sit down. Conley still in the game for the Moundsview Mustangs. First shot off. And once again, offensive rebound controlled by Irondale. Inside. <laughs> Too good. Tried to find somebody who had his back turned. He'll take the shot from the outside now. In and out. And Moundsview controls the rebound. Steve Mays thought the Too Good was going up with the shot, so he was going to the basket. The ball hit him right in the back. Bounced back right to Mays, though. So. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, to Too Good. Leeser looking inside. McTavish will take that shot. Bounces high and does not go down. Controlling the rebound is gross. Here's Harris. Lots of speed. Leeser trying to catch up to him. Came off the bucket twice. And Moundsview controls the rebound. I'm not trying to make excuses, Charlie, but sometimes if you're going full speed down there and you see that wall coming up at you, you have a tendency to kind of take your eye off the basket even for just a second. It's going to throw your shot off. The feet do not fall right for default, and it will be Irondale's ball. And I agree with you, Steve. Uh, this Ordinarily, gyms have a little more room under the bucket. Irondale has a couple of interesting features here on their floor. The walls, of course, come up to you real quick when you're on a drive like that. And, of course, we mentioned the floor on the far side of the court. There you see it. Beyond that railing, as you look towards McTavish, is about four feet of empty space. And I mean down and across, because if you go across, if you go off that floor, you've got a long way to fall. And no matter how hard you concentrate, that's going to be in the back of your mind if you're heading that way. Gross gets the inbound. Sabi will put it up. It comes off and controlled by Schultz. Still 15 to 8. Andy Sco Schultz is back in the game. Score we had at the, at the end of the first period. And a number of people go falling as Dufault, I think, was trying to set a pick. Paid for it. McTavish, strong move inside. He was fouled as he went up. Oh, check that. Offensive foul on McTavish. I think what Irondale's doing now on defense, you'll see it when they come down. It's kind of a zone matchup. They're playing zones of parts of the floor, but then when one guy gets the ball, there is a de designated man to go out and cover him. But they're leaving in the other wing open. That'll definitely help to cover McTavish. McTavish, you can tell when he gets the ball, he's got a strong move to the bucket. Saby puts in a free throw, making it 16 to 8. Irondale over Moundsview. Second one in and off. Moundsview controls just barely. And Schultz will bring it up the court for the Moundsview Mustangs. Mustangs in their white and green with gold trim. The Knights, the maroon and gold with white trim. It's interesting, when McTavish gets close to the basket, they front and back him. And why not? There's the reason. Nice move to the basket there, Mike. McTavish, excellent pass right in there. Try and stop that move. That's what McTavish was saying, is go ahead, try and stop it. Here's Harris proving he can do pretty much the same thing as he drives the lane, but he gets called for charging. No bucket. Score remains 16-10. Iron deal over Moundsview. That was an excellent call. McTavish was in the lane the whole time. He just stood there and Perry Harris had to go right into him. That's another thing you have to think about. You don't have that far to fall back. Your head's going to hit that wall first.
Leiser will take the long bomb. Irondale says go ahead, and here comes Harris with the rebound. That's what Irondale's been saying all night. They're clapping under the basket, and they want Moundsview to take the outside shot. So far, for a lack of a perimeter shooter, Moundsview would be a little bit further into this game. As it is, they're now down 18 to 10. As Mays sinks his second bucket of the night, Mays has six points overall. Well, McTavish is really getting hammered underneath. Anytime he's near the ball, he's going to get it. There's Harris in his face. Doesn't matter. I don't know if the folks at home could see that, though, Charlie. That was an excellent move by Andy Schultz. He faked like he was going up for the shot that put his defender off guard. Threw an underhand pass into McTavish, who just turned and banked it in. Excellent move by Schultz. Coming in is Dan Erickson, the captain for the Mounds, or for the Irondale Knights. As Harris gets called for traveling, it'll be Moundsview's ball. 18-12, your score. Irondale over Moundsview here at Irondale. 4.15 left here in the second period. Looking inside, here's Conley. He'll pass it over to Leeser. Leeser trying to make the move inside the bucket. There's Conley once again, right between the legs of Harris as he put up the shot, and it goes in. Put it up from behind the basket, too. Nice move. Conley, the 6'4 sophomore, puts it in off the post move. Harris will put it up from the outside. Has confidence in his shot, hacking underneath. Somebody's going to get the call. It could go either way. I think it's on Conley. Right you are, Steve Glenn. Yep. And going to the line in the bonus will be Sabby. Conley can put on a little bit of weight here in the next couple years. He's certainly got some tools to be an outstanding player. A little bit thin under there now. Sabi puts it in. Substitution being made by Moundsview as Conley comes out. And coming in now will be Tom Donaldson. Donaldson was the player that Ziggy Calls really wanted in his offense early, but he reported a week late and then fell sick for another week. So he's missed a lot of Moundsview's practices. Scorekeeper down one on points. It's now 19-14. Sabi, perfect from the free throw line. Timeout for the Irondale Knights. 3.45 left here in the second period. The Knights with a 20-14 to 14 lead on Moundsview. And so far, Steve, the game seems to be developing into whether Moundsview can hold back on Irondale's speed. That's really been the difference in the game so far, those breakaway buckets on the steals from Harris and some inside moves as well. And towards the end of the second quarter here, Moundsview has started trying to get the ball inside a little bit more. Before they were just taking the quick outside shot when it was open, and I've seen that a couple times from Andy Schultz and a little bit from uh, Leeser too. But they've got to try and get McTavish, put him across the, the lane and get him the ball because once he gets it, there's not a lot of people that are going to be able to stop him. On the other hand, Moundsview is working, getting some decent shots, and most of them from the inside, which is why they're ahead by six points, I think. A full house at the Irondale Knights High School Gymnasium. You know, a game like this, too, with McTavish, they're uh, giving him a lot of elbows, ribs, whatever. And underneath, so fatigue could be part of a part of the factor come the end of the game, because I'm sure McTavish is going to play the entire game or most of it. So fatigue could be a factor if he's taking a lot of abuse in there. It could take a lot out of a guy. There you got a good look at the floor that we were talking about here at Irondale High School. Once you get to that far side, you only have a couple more feet of leeway before you drop straight off. There you get a real good look at it as Schultz brings down the ball for the Bondsview Mustangs. Leiser with the ball. Looking inside. This is McDonald, or D Donaldson. Donaldson and a foul called underneath. Dan Erickson falls on. That does not put the Moundsview Mustangs into the bonus situation. Only the fourth team foul for Irondale. The first on Erickson. Looks like Moundsview's coach kind of uh, agrees with me. They're trying to pass the ball around a lot more now. Got a little bit better shot. Try and get it to McTavish, hopefully, inside. 
Oop, somebody traveled. Dufault took a little extra bit of a skid as he passed the ball off on the bounce. Dufault. And Irondale will bring the ball up. Dufault with the football. <laughs> Leave it to you to bring up an observation like that. Score remains 2014. Irondale over Moundsview. Inside moves. It'll go to Erickson. Erickson a little short. Sabe comes up with a rebound. Now he'll try to inbound it towards Mays. Foul underneath. That should be called on Donaldson. And Donaldson does draw his first foul. Gave him a little push in the back there. Caused the ball to go over his head. Not too much scoring here in the second period. 2014. Irondale over Moundsview. And Mays makes it 21-14. That'll be interesting to see what the first half shooting percentages are. I don't think they're going to be too high. That one comes off the rim. Moundsview controls the rebound. This early in the season, it's kind of interesting because, you know, rebounds off a missed free throw are not automatic by the defensive team. But we've also seen a couple times tonight is free throws are kind of stones thrown up there, and they're not... Nice shot there by McTavish. But the free throws are really bouncing high and far. They're not nice soft shots that are coming right down near the basket. They're flying way out of there. McTavish now has eight points on the night. Inside move and a nice one by Mays. Gross comes up with a rebound and he'll put it in. And the shot will count. Three-point play coming up from Bill Gross. Leeser draws his second foul of the night. Three-point play coming up for Gross. And good example, Steve. The ball just really coming out of that rim awkwardly. Kind of hard to judge where the rebound's going to come from. Although it's aerodynamically impossible, looks like he threw that ball down at the basket. There was just no arc at all. Schultz calling for somebody inside, waving him off. McTavish guarded all the way around and a whistle underneath. Somebody's going to be called for pushing 5-2. What you can see there, Charlie, is what I mentioned before. They're kind of playing a, a zone trap. When the ball's on the left side of the court over there, there's three Irondale players in front of the ball. Two more are back in the paint. So that really the only man that's open is way out on the opposite wing, and he's going to be far away. And if the ball goes over there, then it'll switch again. So McTavish will go to the line. He'll be shooting one-on-one. 23-16 -on -one. to score. And the big guy gets it to fall. Got the old NBA free throw there. Travis Sabby comes out. Sabby, I should say. I'll get that name right sooner or later. And coming in will be Jim Claremont, number 33. McTavish sinks the pair, 23-18. Irondale over Moundsview. Half-court trap. It works. Schultz coming up with the ball. It's a scramble. Here comes Leeser. Leeser surrounded. Land of the Giants type play. Ball scrambled for underneath. Mays comes up with it. Gross will pass it back to Harris. And Irondale will start their play once again. I think Leeser made a mistake there going up with that ball right away. Tried to be the man in the middle of the paint. And he found himself quickly surrounded. That's exactly right. That's why he should have stopped and dribbled out and started something to take advantage of that turnover. Engstrom is just pulled from the field as Schultz rebounds his air shot. Watch now. There's two guys following McTavish wherever he goes. And McTavish will put up the shot anyway. Nice soft jumper. Doesn't work. Gross rebound. Left-hander. Claremont tries the left-hander, does not fall. 23-18, Moundsview still down to the Irondale Knights here at Irondale High School. Inside of a minute, 45 seconds now, left here in the second period. Very quick game. Inside to McTavish. McTavish hacked underneath. Claremont will draw the foul, or will get the foul, I should say. Tavish back at the line. Yeah, yeah. 
it would appear that McTavish is not one of those people that you want to foul when the going gets tough late in the game. Now for a big man, he shoots free throws very well. I think his college coaches are also going to want him to beef up a little bit. He's kind of got bird legs out there. And he's wearing that brace around the right knee, which of course would concern anybody, coach or not. Moundsview goes into the full court press with less than 30 seconds left here in the period. Harris looking to get it across the timeline, does so. Claremont finds somebody underneath. Gross misses the rebound, or misses the shot, but puts in his own rebound. Fourth bucket for Bill Gross. 25-20, Irondale over Moundsview. On the last 10 seconds of the half here. Interesting to see what Moundsview will do, whether they try an inside move. They go to McTavish. McTavish blocked out by a bunch of people. Taking the shot will be Schultz, and Schultz off the side of the rim and no good. So the Irondale Knights go into the locker room with a five-point lead over the Moundsview Mustangs. 25 to 20, your score. We'll be back with some halftime statistics and some commentary on the first half of this game between the Moundsview Mustangs and the Irondale Knights. But first, this message, you're watching KBL Channel 12 Sports. Control of this game, Irondale up 25 to 20 over the Moundsview Mustangs and Steve Glenn, very definitely a shooting show by the Moundsview Mustangs if they could just put something in the bucket. That's exactly right. They've thrown up 25 shots, Charlie, but only made eight of them, which comes out to about 32%. Irondale, on the other hand, is nine for 19, which is roughly 52, 53%. So Irondale definitely has the advantage there, and they're also taking a couple of more high percentage shots. There, yeah, you, there see. you see the Irondale points. Travis Sabe with five points. Bill Gross, the leader for the Irondale Knights, going into the second half with eight. And Steve Mays, that bagging forward center that Irondale likes to play off the post, he has seven points for the Irondale Knights. Harry Harris also has four, and Dan Tugood has just one. I should also mention, too, Irondale is 7-11 from the free throw line, whereas Moundsview is four for five, all four free throws coming from Steve McTavish. And there you see the Moundsview points going into the second half. Steve McTavish, the leader for the Moundsview Mustangs with 12 points, all of them coming from basically very close inside, despite that matchup zone uh, defense that the Irondale Knights are employing. And there you see Andy Schultz, six points, but he's taken, I would say, probably 10 shots. So he's not shooting too well tonight. And the only other person to score is Mike Conley, the big sophomore, who has two points. Earlier, Jim Temple had handed me a slip of paper that had said Moundsview was three of eight for shooting. At that time, Schultz had taken six of those shots. So for a while, he was a 50% shooter from the field, but not for long. Now, I'm sure that he's taken some shots that the Moundsview coach, I'm sure, hasn't liked a whole lot. But towards the end of the half, they started passing their ball around quite a bit more, getting the ball inside McTavish is where they want it, and I think you're going to see more of that in the second half. Uh, rebounding, Travis Davey has seven rebounds, as does Bill Gross, and Steve McTavish has five rebounds, so rebounds haven't been that big of a factor. Mainly, it's just moundsview has got to pass the ball, get it inside McTavish. He's the man that they've got to go to. We've mentioned it time and time again, and he's proved it so far tonight with 12 points. I think if they can get it back to him, they're certainly not out of this game. They're only seven points down. I'm sorry, five points down. That can be made up very quickly, and I think we'll see a pretty exciting second half. Do you think that Irondale will throw a little bit more of a different defense against Moundsview? I mean, it, it seems that McTavish is getting his points no matter what, but I got the feeling that Coach Larry Rogley and his thing for Irondale is thinking, well, we'll give McTavish his 20 points, but nobody else gets to score very much else. I think that's a pretty good observation. We saw in the first half that Irondale is fronting and backing McTavish. There's two men following him wherever he goes. He's taking his shots, but of those 12 points, I think he's taking quite a bit more, quite a few more shots than that. They're going to tire him out. Hopefully, towards the fourth quarter, his fatigue is going to become a factor. I mentioned earlier, he's taking a lot of physical pounding in there, and we'll see what he can stand up to. But I think you're right. They're going to let McCavish take his shots and try and force Schultz and Liesler and maybe Dufault to shoot from the outside. They can prove themselves from out there. For foul trouble, nobody has more than two in the game so far. Schultz has a pair for the Moundsview Mustangs, as does Travis Sabe for Irondale. Leeser also has two for the Mustangs. After that, McTavish, Swearingen, Conley, Donaldson all have one. So nobody is really in serious foul trouble as far as this particular 
advantage or a point in the game is concerned. I don't think Irondale looks to foul McTavish, although Ziggy Calls told me before the game that if McTavish got six or seven fouls, he would leave him in the game. Well, he'd have to. McTavish is the heart and soul of this team. Without him out there, they're, I think, turning into just an average team. He's got to be out there for them to win, and he'll risk that, I, I guess they call it a technical, two, two foul, two shot technical when it's over. Okay, we'll be back with the opening inbound for the second half. Your score, once again, Moundsview 25, or Irondale 25 and Moundsview 20. We'll be back with the second half action right after this. the playback times for our game between the Mountain View Mustangs and the Irondale Knights. If it managed to catch the game at its particular vantage point right here, those are the games, those are the times you can pick up the game, the rest of the game, I should say, the first half, and also tell some of your friends about it. Excellent North Suburban Conference basketball action here on KBL Channel 12. Might be a game worth watching. Has been so far. Irondale doing just what their first-year coach, Larry Rongley, wanted them to do. They've got balanced scoring in the first half, just like they did in their first game. They pass the ball around to God. Everybody gets into the action. Whereas Moundsview so far, it's been a Steve McTavish show. Awaiting the start of the second half. And the referee tells Bill Larry Rongley, okay, guys, let's hit the floor and let's get going. Starting lineup for the Moundsview Mustangs will be McTavish, Schultz, Swearingen, Dufault, and I believe that's Leiser out there. Yes, it is. For the Irondale Knights, it'll be Engstrom, Mays, Sabe, and Harris, and Gross. Looks like both starting lineups are back in. Harry Harris, who was a spark plug for Irondale, all of his points came on breakaway steel type baskets. Underneath is Mays. Mays puts up the looper, and McTavish didn't really have to work for that rebound very much at all. Mays drew nothing but air on that shot. Something that you see during early in the season, a lot of those close shots drawing nothing but air. Still, it's pretty embarrassing. I've done it myself a few times. Oh, no. You? All the time. I'm Mr. Brick. Steve downtown, Glenn. Travis Saby comes up with a steal and gets it to fall. And the first two points of the second half are scored. Irondale goes up 27-20 on Moundsview. Take away the steel baskets by Irondale, and you've got basically a tie game. Got ESP going here, Charlie. I was just going to mention that. Irondale's defense has gotten them at least 10 points, I think, tonight. McTavish tosses in a pair to answer Sabe's shot. And here comes Harris. McTavish has shown us tonight that he can shoot the ball from just about anywhere. Front, side, make the move underneath or outside. Underneath, it's off the back of the backboard and rebounded by Schultz. Engstrom put up the shot. Boy, Engstrom just, he has not had any luck at all from the field tonight, none whatsoever. Leaser with the ball. Trying to find somebody inside. McTavish, send it back to Leeser. Swearingen, he'll face some pressure. And it'll come back to him as he looks underneath. Ball tapped away by Harris, and here goes Harris once again. He's got Leeser in front of him. Behind the back pass, and it will not fall. Behind the back pass to Mays. Mays couldn't convert. Whistle underneath. That's at least the third steal that Terry Harris has had tonight. Foul is on Swearingen, his second. And the first team foul for Moundsview. He's got those quick hands, and then he uses that speed of his to get down the court. Terry Harris, six-foot senior guard. The spark plug for Irondale so far here in this game. Mays trying to find some room inside. Does not. Tapped away and stolen by Swearingen. As he saw somebody telegraph a pass. And Moundsview will bring it down the court. They're down by five, 27-22. Inside to McTavish. McTavish, strong move to the bucket. One hands it. 
McTavish is doing his part keeping the Mountain View in this game. He is the, almost the sole source of scoring for the Mustangs. Only Schultz and Conley are in the ledger scoring-wise for Moundsview. There's a long cross-court pass that Swearingen almost had his hands on for the second time in a row. And McTavish has 16 of their 24 points. Crossing back over. Dan Two Goods getting ready to check into the game for Irondale. Dufault decided to play Engstrom's chin a little bit and gets called for the foul. Matt Engstrom's coming out. Twenty-seven, twenty-four. Moundsview has cut the lead to three. And Moundsview has gone to more of a zone here in the second half. They realized in their man-to-man -man there was just too many people getting open shots. Alternate possession on the jumper will go to the Moundsview Mustangs, and the Mustangs, with this, with this trip down the floor, can cut it to one. And apparently Moundsview's zone has worked because uh, Irondale just hasn't been quite as hot and gotten a good shot like they did in the first half. Whistle underneath. And Irondale is still sticking with his own trap. Still 27-24, 4.30 left here in the third period along with Steve Glynn. This is Charlie Skellick. Hope you're enjoying North Suburban Conference basketball from Irondale High School. The Irondale Knights with a three-point lead on the Mustangs, 27-24. Mustangs coached by Ziggy Calls in their white and green with the gold trim. The Knights in their maroon and gold with the white trim. Temp of the game has really slowed down here at the start of the second half, Charlie. Mays will put up the shot. Nice arc on it, but it wasn't far enough. And Monsview rebounds once again, swearing them. Skied for that baby. He's played an important part here in the second half. He's had a couple of steal attempts. He's had a couple of Irondale. Schultz is having kind of a nightmare evening out there. Well, it either looks like a highlight film or something out of an eighth grade playbook. More of the latter so far tonight. Blocked, and McTavish says, hey, I got nothing but ball, as Sabe went up for the shot. Not the case. McTavish, just his second foul of the night. Check that, his third foul. As I'm reminded by both Mike Murphy and Jim Temple, our statisticians for tonight's game. Glad to have them along. They definitely make our jobs a lot easier and make us sound a lot smarter. That's not easy to do. No kidding. That's three team falls already on Moundsview, Charlie. Irondale has yet to commit a team fall here in the second half. One of two for Sabe. And Schultz. Irondale comes up the floor once again on a steal. Schultz was talking to the coach there, and he threw the pass and didn't notice the Irondale player coming up. Nice move by Gross. Gross gets into double figures with that bucket. Ten points all from the field. And Irondale leads 30 to 24. McTavish going to do it all by himself and pays for it. Draws the foul. Sabe will draw the foul. In high school, you don't often see a 6-7 player out at the top of the key dribbling the ball around. Well, Ziggy Calls told me before the game that McTavish will do everything, and that includes bringing the ball up the floor if he happens to have the ball and Irondale goes into a full court press. Ralph Sampson would enjoy playing here. <laughs> Shot put up by Moundsview, nothing doing. Irondale comes down with the rebound. Too good, looking inside, finds. Keith, Keith Gillette, who just came into the game, number 51. Name is spelled G-E-O-L-A-P, but it's pronounced Gillette. Also, Todd Trevaney in the game for Irondale. McTavish, strong move to the bucket, but had to put too much strength into the shot as he went up. Ball stolen, nice move, and it falls off. 
Dufault made an excellent defensive play there, but couldn't quite keep himself in bounds. Dufault showing excellent athletic ability and trying to keep that ball in to no avail. Baby looks inside. This is Chervaney. Irondale can't sit on anything with a six-point lead, but they can't afford to pass the ball around and try and get a good shot. And they get one. There's Gross over McTavish. Oh, a jump hook. Bill Gross. Could be finding his range at two in a row for him. No kidding. Shades of his brother Rod, who's playing now at Marquette. Bill Gross, just a junior center at 6'6". He'll be a welcome addition in 1987 for Larry Rondley. Moundsview, hard to find a bucket inside. They go outside from Conley. Nice rebound from McCavish. McCavish with a division one move to score his third bucket of the half. And he keeps it close, 32 to 26. Irondale over Moundsview. looking for an opportunity inside. They're trying to get the ball. To get it to Gross off the post playing for McTavish. Ball came off a bounds due player. Irondale will inbound. That's the matchup too we've been looking for is Gross and McTavish. 50 seconds left in the period. Inside. I think they're going to call McTavish. Gillette coming in the across the court, across the lane I should say. McTavish stuck his hand in. That's his fourth foul. And as we mentioned a couple times earlier, if he gets number five, Ziggy Calls is not going to take him out. Inside pass, nobody there. I think he thought Gross was going to come across the lane there, but Gross had other ideas. And Schultz gets his instructions before he crosses the timeline. 32 to 26. Moundsview is down to Irondale here at Irondale Senior High School and a foul underneath. It's going to be on Gross, I think. Gross indeed does draw the foul. Or does get the foul, I should say. Some argument from Larry Ronglian on the call itself. Going to the line will be Schultz. They've not put up how many fouls Gross has. There we go. His first personal. As Schultz sinks the free throw. The third period is almost over, and that's the second Moundview player to score here in the period. McTavish has the rest of the points for the Mustangs. That goes in for Schultz. 32 to 28. Moundsview has kept it close. Irondale looking to inside. Trying to find somebody. Too good. Almost had the ball taken away from him. Gillette. Gillette and Gross got to be careful that they don't bunch up under the basket there. Gillette playing high post. Gross playing low post. Ball stolen away by Conley. Four the seconds. Two. Three, two, one. Off the back of the rim, the second time Schultz has had an opportunity to finish the period with a bucket, and he does not do so. When we go into the fourth period, it will be Irondale 32, Moundsview 28. We'll be back for exciting fourth quarter action from Irondale High School. The Mustangs and the Knights locked up in a good one. We'll be right back here on KABL Channel 12. Back in March 86, HBO presented Comic Relief, the live marathon fundraising event to aid America's homeless. Now HBO will take you behind the scenes for a close-up look at what went into putting it together. We're busy, we're rehearsing. The long hours. The for no pay. Take my salary, please. Great expectations. Five billion people will be watching this. It's kind of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Comic Relief Backstage Pass. Backstage is maybe more fun than the back.
Back at Irondale Senior High School, we're ready to complete the fourth period of action. There you see the end of the third period score. Mustangs 32, or I should say Knights 32, Mustangs 28. Steve, uh, the shooting percentages uh, would lend an explanation to the low scoring nature of this game. Real low in the third quarter there, Charlie. Mountain View was three for eight, and Irondale was even worse, three for nine. And three for eight, all three of those buckets from the field coming from McTavish. So the fourth period of action gets underway here at Irondale. Sabe will look inside, comes off the foot of Swearingen. Swearingen really is getting himself into the game. He has been harassing Irondale whenever he's had the chance. He's had that opportune steal, those opportune chances to get the offense going for the Mustangs. Well, on both sides, we've seen excellent defense tonight, which could account some for the low shooting percentage. What was surprising is even here in the third period, a lot of the shots that they have been missing have been coming from the inside. Schultz whistled there for the foul. Schultz nailed for the foul on the hat. But getting back to that shooting, as both teams are taking more high percentage shots than they were in the first half, and yet the shooting percentages have gone down instead of up. For Andy Schultz, that is his fourth personal. He joins McTavish with that number on the one-on-one. -on -one. Trevaney cannot sink it, and Moundsview will come up the floor. So now two of Moundsview's key players, Andy Schultz and Steve McTavish, both with fourth personal fouls as we begin the fourth period. Dufault looking inside. Schultz fakes the shot, does not take it. And right now they'll play it back and forth, trying to get it to McTavish. The ball came off McTavish's hands. Fronted back and forth is McTavish, and walking with the ball is Schultz. Schultz, though, desperately wants to get something started. And Irondale coming down the floor. Inside to Gross. Gross has it slapped away by Swearingen. And Swearingen will draw the foul as he goes away with the rebound. That will be Gross's second foul. And very quickly, Irondale will be in the, I should say, Moundsview will be in the bonus. Just an air ball from Swearingen. Swearingen wasn't even close. <laughs> I don't know where that shot was going. Nice play Knocked there by, by Conley. Excellent. Nice play. There's a lot of presence out there for just a sophomore. Just amazes me how many good underclassmen there are in the North Suburban Conference this year. Knocked away by McCavish on a Division I block. That's knocked in by Conley, but it hit the black line first. It'll be Irondale ball. Yeah, McCavish went up and swatted that one away. Love to see that. Just love it. Shot blocking is an art you don't see very often in high school, but... Tavish did a nice job there. I think that's about the only reason Mark Eaton of the Utah Jazz is in the pros. Besides the fact he's 7-4? Well, but he's not much of an offensive player, but he had about 700 block shots last year. Going after the ball. Nice job by Swearing, and we said he was in there all the time. Dufo gets the bucket. No foul. Mazi was pulled to within two. You're going to see their defensive intensity just rise here. Moundsview goes to the 1-3-1 zone. Irondale looking inside, and there's Cheve. I should say too good. Too good. Up with a shot. Foul was on Swearingen. That 1-3-1, Charlie, that's designed to stop the, the Mound, or I'm sorry, Irondale getting the ball into Rod Rockwell. Sorry slipping here. Bill Gross has been robbed for so long around here that it just kind of comes out naturally. But exactly what did happen can happen. Two good kind of slipped around behind the, the three and then there's only one man back there to cover two guys so he can go up the layup. Three point play from Two Good, and now 
The spark plug for the Irondale Knights comes back in the game. Perry Harris wearing number 23. I think they got him out there to provide just a little bit more defense. He's a ball hawk. Battle underneath. There's McTavish. McTavish had it swatted away momentarily, but he controls it. Irondale has switched into a 2-3 zone. McTavish off the glass and in. Boy, what a controlled action from McTavish. You can see why he's got the Division I scholarship at Texas. Just about the third or fourth different defense we've seen Irondale in. They haven't had Mitch Ruck stopping McTavish. That's why they've tried the different ones, and he shows he can beat just about anything they throw at him. There's the 1-3-1's deficiency once again. This time Irondale does not convert. Trying to make the shot with Sabe. Moundsview rebounds, they are down 35 to 32 to the Irondale Knights. Moundsview can cut it to one with this trip down the court. Swearing it. Here's Conley, Conley. Traveled as he took the shot, it's Irondale's ball. Mays will come in now for the Irondale Knights and he will replace Gillette. So the Irondale Knights basically going to their starting offense the only exception being Shervani is still in the game, and Engstrom has sat down. 1-3-1, one, one, tapped away by Conley. Boy, he shows presence on the four for a sophomore. McTavish controls the steal. Bucket here, holding the twin one. The Mustangs had a chance the last time, but Conley traveled on his shot. Probably not one that Ziggy Calls wanted him to take anyway. McTavish. Will handle the ball to the outside. He'll dish the default. Ziggy calls, taking his time. He knows he doesn't have to ring up a score just yet. Underneath, Schultz. They got to be looking for McTavish to break free. Ball swatted away. Guess who? A situation like that, though, Charlie, they're trying too hard to get the ball into McTavish. They have some open shots that they could take, and then maybe McTavish can get the rebound if it's missed. Timeout called by Irondale. 3.30 left in this ballgame. Irondale has a three-point lead on the Mustangs, 35 to 32. We'll keep it right here. Situation, Irondale is in the bonus. They can take the one-on-one. -on -one. They can start looking for the fouls. I think what Zig Falls is going to tell the Mountain View Mustangs is it yes if McTavish is free certainly get him the ball and take him the shot but don't make that the be all and end all of their offense there have some other open shots that they could take and then crash the offensive board so I think Irondale knows that McTavish is who they want to get it to so they're going to put three guys around them kind of play a diamond around them and just force one of the other mountain view players to take a shot so face it there hasn't been many of them that have had a shot or taken any shots or good shooting at all and McTavish has, I have him down for about 20 points so far tonight. That's what he's got. So he's got all but 12 of Mount's two points. Well, if you take him and Schultz out of the game, Schultz, of course, with eight points in the game, without those two players, Mountsview would have just two other buckets from Dufault and Conley. You're right, Steve. They have to shut down McTavish if they expect to win this game. You know Zig Calls wants to get it inside to him. And so far, nobody from Moundsview has proved that they can shoot from the perimeter. Moundsview still in the 1-3-1. Harris will take the shot. It's off the bucket. I don't think Rondelian wanted him to take the shot. Full court pressure defense being employed by the Irondale Knights. Now they switch off as Dufault brings it up the court. You see what they did there is they took Gross and put him out on the wing hoping to bring McTavish out from under the basket so maybe they could slip somebody else in there and not have McTavish in there to play defense against it. See that they got a couple people following McTavish around. McTavish, pressure shot. Conley with the rebound. It falls and he gets the foul. Three point play and powered up for the Mustangs. Monsey was actually pretty lucky there. McTavish forced up a shot that he shouldn't have taken. Fell short, but Conley was there under the basket to get it and put it back up. Foul was on Shervani, his first. Conley doesn't waste any time. Moundsview is still down by a point with 2.48 left here in the game. 35 to 34, your score. 
Irondale's got, Irondale's got some smaller players out there on the wing. They're going to try and move the ball around with passing. Hopefully, Moundsview's going to have to follow him pretty soon. And then that's not the shot they wanted. Bounces around the reach, so rim a couple of times. Foul underneath. And it's on Sabi. Sabi of Irondale draws his fourth personal foul, and Moundsview can go ahead with this trip down the court. I don't understand that shot there by Sabi. He was way outside. A little bit of discussion here on whether or not the teams are the one and one. Scoreboard only has Irondale with, whoop, there it goes, up to seven fouls. <laughs> <laughs> with that three, and now it's up to seven. Oh, now it's down to five. I think that's where it should have been before. I know that foul by Gross earlier would have been the team's fourth team foul. And McTavish is at the line. I think he's four for four so far in the evening. He is deadly from the free throw line. He's not the guy you want at the line if you're Larry Ronglian. And now the referees are going to have to discuss this as to how many team fouls the Irondale Knights really have. They're also, they're right here in front of us. We can hear them a little bit. They're talking about timeout, too, because that's going to become critical here towards the last two minutes. So a little bit of updating on the scoreboard as far as team fouls is concerned for the Moundsview Mustangs and the Irondale Knights. Foul is on Mays, his first personal. And going to the line is McTavish. I the guy's cool out there. McTavish can put the Moundsview Mustangs in the lead with this free throw. Falls in and out. It's a tie ball game. 227 left. Bringing it down the floor, Shervaney. Looking inside, it's stolen by Dufault. Dufault, he spread it out, the Irondale player the pass was intended for, swiped it. Looks, looks like Monsey was in a 2-1-2 there. Keeping McTavish in the middle of the lane to stop anything that came that way, and then they're just putting pressure on the ball. There's McTavish, strong move to the bucket. Moving, still close. Monsey has to lead for the first time of the game. 37-35, Moundsview. That's 23 for McTavish. Nice move. Sadie does not get the rebound, does not get the follow lead layup, and Sadie just about dives into no man's land, trying to get that ball back. Timeout, called by the Moundsview Mustangs. Sig Calls wants to talk over the first lead he has had in this game over the Irondale Knights. I don't know what to say. Moundsview's gone to that 2-1-2 two -two zone, like I mentioned. They're stopping anything Irondale has to try and get inside. They're going to force him to shoot from the wing. And Irondale has not done that tonight. They've taken most of their shots from the inside, so their outside shooters are pretty well untested. Moundsview, on the other hand, they're just going to, I think, pass the ball around. They have been doing, trying to get him to make tab. It's worked so far. He's got 23 points. And it's down to a minute, 36 left. So fouls are going to come into it here pretty soon also. It's going to be, I think, one or lost at the line. Defense has been excellent here this evening. Both teams have forced a number of turnovers and unforced errors besides the steals that they've got. So we should really see more of a, a defensive show here than an offensive show. And to just point that up, Mike Murphy, one of our statisticians, along with Jim Temple, just pointed out to us that Irondale is one for six in the fourth period from the field. So... The defense for Moundsview definitely has closed up on Irondale. They've not done very much shooting from the field at all. Yeah, they're only 4 for 15 on the half, which is less than 33%. So that's, that's bad. <laughs> well, that's good if you're I, Moundsview. I was trying to find defense. a nice way to say it, but that, that's, that's just bad. Looking over our shoulders as we're getting ready for the final 135 of this game. Moundsview with a two-point lead over the Irondale Knights, and they will inbound the ball. 
McTavish will do the inbounding. It will go to Schultz. Perry Harris will sit down for the Irondale Knights. That's kind of a surprise. I figured they'd want him in for this defense. And Erickson will go back out. Erickson, the six foot one senior captain. There you see him guarding Schultz. Swearing an inside. Conley, who has really proved himself to be a cool cookie in the time he has spent on the floor for the Moundsview Mustang. Irondale staying in their 2 3 zone. Big call says, let's pass it around. Let's wipe some time off the clock and take that final shot. They're going to take, well, they don't have to take the final shot because they're ahead. They're going to force Irondale to follow them. Now, if I was Irondale, I'd want to follow somebody like Dufault or Conley would probably be the perfect man to follow. So I don't think you're going to see Conley get the ball unless he's got a wide open layup. That's what Zig Calls is playing for anyway. Time ticking down. 43-44, Dufault momentarily lost the ball but controlled it as he was at the top of the key. Here's Schultz. He'll go to Swearingen. Swearingen caught from behind. Gross will draw, but Gross will get the foul. And Swearingen will go to the line. 33 seconds left in the game. His team up by two. Swearingen has not scored tonight. He's taken a couple of shots and missed them. So often in this week of play here on KBL Channel 12, we've seen it come down to the free throws in the final minute. This is no exception. Comes off the rim. Irondale controls. 30 I seconds left in the game. I think you're going to see him call a timeout so they can talk about things. I think they should. Not, they're not going to unless maybe he gets down to the They had their play controlled. Gross lost the ball and recovered it. How did he do that? Shot on the way. Ill advised. Ball struggled for. Gross covered the rebound. You got 12 seconds. Has to put it up. Inside pass. Davey doesn't get it. The tip in is no good. Ball will go to the Mountview Mustangs with seven seconds left in the game. What a struggle for the rebound. Tip in attempt. Lost rebounds. Unbelievable. Mountview will call a timeout. 37 35. They lead. Seven seconds left in the game. Timeout. Time out here on the floor. What is Ziggy Calls telling Steve McTavish and the rest of his charges? I think he's just going to tell him that he knows that they're going to get fouled. So they're just going to pass the ball. They'll probably try to get it in to McTavish because they know that he's been great from the free throw line. So I think he's going to work a play where McTavish is going to get the ball on the inbounds pass. And then Irondale is going to have to call him. Irondale, on the other hand, is going to have to try and keep McTavish from getting the ball, obviously. So they're going to try and hope that maybe leave Conley open or Swearing it again, and then as soon as they touch it, they're going to have to follow him. So if Conley or Swearing and does get it for Moundsby, they should just pass it right away to anybody that they see. And if you're Irondale, what are you thinking here? Find the guy who's coldest, perhaps Swearing it again? That's the best I was mentioning, Swearing it or Conley. I think should, that those are the two men that I think they'd want to follow. Definitely not McCavish, which is why Moundsby is probably trying to get, going to get McCavish the ball on the inbound pass here. Davey had a chance there. He was right under the basket, but he just really threw the ball up there too hard. I think he was just a little bit too pumped up and spun off the front rim. Both teams in the bonus situation. The Moundsview Mustangs. You'll see McTavish is down there. He's going to make a break because he's one they want to have the ball. And look at they have Conlon, Conley and Swearing and back here. Here's Dufault back over to Schultz. Schultz will be fouled underneath. Two seconds left in the ball game. The Moundsview Mustangs rank number 15. In the Minneapolis Star and Tribune Metro Pole. Now go to the line with a chance to ice it. There is only two seconds left, Charlie, but I think Schultz made a mistake there. I think he kind of wanted to go to the line to shoot. But there was four Irondale players around him. All he had to do is lob the ball up court. McTavish and Conley were both standing up here with nobody around him. But he can get his name in the paper if he makes it. Ziggy calls. Ordering the rest of the Moundsview Mustangs to the other side of the timeline as Schultz is ready to take the free throw shot. Three point lead with two seconds left. That is just about the icing on the cake. Schultz has three points here in the second half, all of them on free throws. And the Irondale Knights want to talk about it. 
With two seconds left, I'm not sure there's actually too much to talk about. Even if Schultz misses this, it would have to be a three-point play for him. And I don't think that uh, if he misses it, I think Moundsview's best thing is just to let Irondale go, to go ahead and take any kind of shot that they want because all they can get is two points out of it, as long as they don't follow him. Well, let's put it this way. If Irondale does inbound and go for the bucket, you're going to see a lane about as wide as you would for a football play. Mount will just peel off and let him go. I don't know of a player who's fast enough to get the ball down the court with two seconds left and get a bucket and somehow for the Irondale Knights to get it back. No, there's just no way. And you know Irondale is... At least the band is conceded. They are leaving. <laughs> Shows a lot of the, the crowd is filing out of here. It was a great game, though. Not a whole lot to show offensively. Pretty sloppy, but... The first game of the season for Moundsview. They're proud to come out with a victory. They're lucky to come out with a victory, actually. Irondale just had a horrendous second-half shooting. And the Irondale Knights, their cold shooting, cost them the game. 38 to 35, the Moundsview Mustangs take a victory from the Irondale Knights. Larry Ronglian and Zig Pauls with the handshakes right in front of us here at the scoring table. The Mustangs go in to the North Suburban Conference with a 1-0 record over the Irondale Knights. The Knights go to 1-1. One and one. There you see the final score. Mustangs 38, Knights 35. Again, horrendous shooting on the part of the Irondale Knights here in the second period, this the second half. This final score, Charlie, looks like it should be the first half score. Both teams shot well, well under 50% for the game. Pretty sloppily played uh, offense. A lot of turnovers, a lot of unforced errors, a lot of errant passes. I think the, the big thing, defensively, both teams played well, especially Irondale in the first half. Perry Harris, that next one game, had a few steals. Uh, in the second half, Moundsview came out. They played a tenacious D. They went to that 1-3-1. Uh, kind of to keep Gross out of the, the lane, which they did very effectively. I think Irondale here, I only have them for about 10 points of what they had. They had yeah, that's what. They had 25 at the half, and they only scored 10 points in the second half. So, obviously, Moundsview talked about it. The halftime came up with a defensive scheme, and it worked. But Moundsview, or I'm sorry, Irondale should have found a way to broke through that. There's... Unofficially, I have uh, Irondale for Flint Bronk. Well, hey, you know, the uh, the bucket just didn't give you anything. That's all there was to it. We'll be back with the final statistics for tonight's game between the Moundsview Mustangs and the Irondale Knights right after these messages. You're watching KABL Channel 12 with the final score once again. The Irondale Knights...
couldn't get a good shot. That's three. Jaron Jackson. <laughs> You're right. That's good coaching, isn't it? Yeah, the only one was uh, Guillory missing that fine pass in, in the interior for where he should have just dunked the basketball and saw it instead of being cute. Goodson tries to nail one inside. Doesn't work. Charles Smith, number 13. Jaron Jackson puts it up, has it rejected, but then the tip is up and in. This Georgetown team is just outworking them, out hustling them up and down the court. You know, you watch Goodson play, Vern, and you get the feeling that this young man should just take a deep breath and relax out there and just have some fun on the basketball court. He's just trying to do everything so perfectly well that he's just not comfortable. There's a foul, Charles Smith, number 13. Now, there wasn't much question, Billy, on that last pass. He tried to, he saw something like that and then tried to force it. Yeah, and that's usually that the tendency there is that there's a little pressure on the player and he's just not comfortable. He's trying to make the coach happy and make the great play for his ball club. Jerome Lane is at the line, number 34. Interesting, Lane was over here during the first game watching the uh, Duke North Carolina game. Put your headsets on. Was critiquing Gary Bender and Billy Packer. I thought I lost my job. Yeah, the teammates were out there warming up. Lane says, hey, I like this business. This is good, good money here. Lane gets the mode. Coming up next weekend on NCAA basketball on CBS, a doubleheader at Villanova and Virginia, the first game. Most of you will see UNLV and Oklahoma in the second, some of you, West Virginia and Notre Dame. That's next Saturday here on CBS. It'll be fun to see Jerry Tarkanian and the Rebels at Oklahoma. 27-22, 5.33 to go first half. And Jaron Jackson has six points off the bench. You know, the one thing that was questionable about this Georgetown team was their perimeter shooting. And what they've been able to do is get the ball into areas where they're shooting eight-foot jump shots, nine. The, the only person that's shooting with any distance is uh, Reggie Williams on this court. And the intensity has got to pick up for Pittsburgh at the defensive end of the court. Gore, Goodson, for three, Haken. Nice strong offensive board for Jerome Lane. He's number two in the country with an average of 13 rebounds a ball game. Just an outstanding rebound, and that's where his gravy is. And he's just got to do a better job, I think, anticipating the shots coming from his teammates and getting that good position on the boards because that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to work on the boards, and he's a garbage player. Folks say, well, who's number one? It'll surprise you, won't it? Chuck Dudley of Yale? Number one rebounder in NCAA basketball. 29-24 game, 4-29 to go first half. Charles Smith, folks here thought he traveled, no call. And it's out of bounds off Ronnie Highsmith, and Pittsburgh will have it. Substitution now again, Mark Tillman, the freshman 